everyone, my name is Claire, also known as a Naked Warrior. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you actually how easy it is to start having more of a plant-based diet and incorporating more fiber-rich foods into your everyday eating plans so you can get the health benefits that come with following a, what some would say like a vegetarian diet. So what is a vegetarian diet and how do we get more plants into our, our meals? A vegetarian diet is one where you're not eating any meat products, um, you know, beef, poultry, fish, and there's other type of diets that, that do go around that. You know, some people don't have any um, cow's milk or cheese, so they would be uh, lacto-vegetarian, and people who don't eat eggs would be what we call ovo-vegetarian. Now, you don't have to be a vegetarian to have the benefits of eating more plant-based foods. Uh, if we have a think about fruits and vegetables, they are rich in phytonutrients, they've got all your micronutrients, and all your vitamins and minerals that really help to optimise your overall health, energy and vitality. The health benefits that come with having less meat products in your diet and more plant-based ones, including, they include um, you know, lowering your blood pressure, Plant-based foods are naturally lower in sodium, fats, and cholesterol. So these normally contribute to having high blood pressure. So if you remove um, or have more plants in your food, then you're going to be reducing your blood pressure and the worry about cholesterol as well. You know, animal meat tends to be high in saturated fat, which is not good for us from a heart disease perspective. So if you're reducing your meat intake and increasing your vegetables, then you can be confident that you're decreasing your risk of coronary heart disease and also lowering your um, bad cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, which is one that blocks up all your little arteries. So whilst it might not be appropriate for you to follow a full vegetarian diet, um, I can definitely recommend trying to bring in more plants and plant-based foods to complement your current eating habits. The biggest thing that people worry about is that they won't be able to meet their protein requirements by eating just plants. The reason this is, is because we're trying to make sure we have our complete amino acid profile. So there are you know, essential amino acids that you get from your, from your food, and then once you eat these essential amino acids, then your body utilizes those to create all of the range of uh, amino acids that your body needs. I'm not gonna get into that one today, that's gonna be a completely different video. But for now, what I'm gonna let you know is that meat-based products, they do have the complete amino acid profile, if you like, that is used by your body to create the rest of them. So this is why some people tend to be a bit fearful around wanting to, um, or restricting meat, because they don't think they're going to be able to meet their protein needs. Now, plants do have protein in them as well. So you can have amino acids, uh, the full amino acid range by eating plants. You just have to be smart in the foods that you're having and have a wide range of those foods. So for instance, if you think about um, you know, legumes, so these would be kidney beans, chickpeas, um, all of your beans and your pulses, such as lentils. These are um, plant-based foods that do have an amino acid profile. If you're eating these regularly and combining them with other protein-rich vegetable sources, such as brown rice and peas, um, broccoli and uh, spinach, then by combining those foods in a meal, you can be confident that you're getting the amino acids that you need to then create everything that you need in your body, if that makes sense. So your beans, pulses, legumes, lentils, they've all got you know a little bit, mix it with this one, and then you can um, be confident that you're putting into your body everything that it needs to make the rest of them. You can also think about supplementing your, your daily food intake. So think about where you can say drop out maybe a dairy product and start to introduce more of a plant-based product. A great example of this would be say dropping dairy milk and switching to a uh, nut-based milk. So there's plenty that are out there on the market nowadays. So you know we've got things like soy milk, um, you know nut milk such as most popular ones almond milk and a really popular one is also oat milk. 
These tend to be fortified, which basically means, you know, added extra ingredients have been given to increase the other range of nutrients that they have in, you know, such as vitamin D and things like that. You can also actively try to think about adding more greens into your diet. So, you know, at lunchtime, are you putting salad leaves into your wrap? Are you then having vegetables at dinner as well? So if you can try and space all of your intake in through the day, throughout the day, then you'll be confident that you're getting the right amount of nutrients into you. Snack on fruit. Like I said before, fruit and vegetables, think about a color of a rainbow. Try to see how many vegetables and fruit that you can put into your, your diet throughout the day. Have um, you know, blueberries on your porridge for breakfast with some flaxseed and you, you know, that's a great breakfast to have. Instead of having scrambled eggs, you can have scrambled tofu, which is a good source of um, vegetarian food, or plant-based food, um, that supplements having eggs and, and meat for breakfast. You know, tofu, bean curd, um, and tempeh, which is fermented tofu, all comes from the soya bean, which is a, a widely used, versatile, plant-based product um, that creates lots of vegetarian, plant-based foods out there. You kind of get the drift with this plant-based thing. Um, so like I said, for lunch, you know, go and have, um, like if you're eating dairy, then you can have a cheese and salad sandwich, or you know, make your own salads. Really try to think about a big, colorful bowl of salad. You know, have tomatoes. If you're cooking in an evening, you know, add chopped tomatoes to something. That's gonna increase, you know, a lot of your nutrients, vitamins, that are gonna help to, to build up the, um, the nutrients within your body. Uh, like I said, you can also snack on nuts and seeds as well. You know, have these throughout the day with a piece of fruit. Uh, you can get lots of different salad toppers that you can put onto your meal salads in lunchtime or in the evening. And then really try to have a think about where else you can increase your plant-based um, food intake. You know, a great snack also to have is cottage cheese. You know, this is high in protein. Yes, it is, you know, an animal source. In, in fact, it is, it's dairy, it's coming from an animal, but it's not a animal. So, um, you know, people are okay with eating dairy and cottage cheese is a really good one to have. You know, spread it on a cracker with a tomato or a corn thin. Um, again, you can put it in a sandwich, put it on a jacket potato. Fiber rich, nutrient rich, protein rich. That's a go for you. Um, and if you are really, really struggling with trying to increase your um, intake of plant-based foods, there's also a lot of um, supplements you can have. So, you know, wheatgrass powder, um, chlorella powder, there's loads of different green blends that are out there. Now, they don't always taste good, but you know, like I said, just mix it up a little bit of water, shot it down, um, and it's into your body quickly. So try to make sure that, you know, you have a look at your food intake throughout the whole day. Think about where can I blend my foods together? Remember the key foods that are high in protein from, from plant-based sources. So your go-tos that should become staples in your kitchen cupboard, just like my one here, legumes, beans, pulses. So go down to your local supermarket and go and check out the aisle, which has got the kidney beans, the chickpeas, and go and see what else there is there that you can use to, to add into your meals. If you're making a bolognese or a chili, you can chuck those in there as well. Um, you know, you can also get, um, uh, what's it called? Like uh, corn and <laughs> the, um, the textured protein substitute. So there are a lot of manufactured products that are, you know, meat substitute products out there in, in the supermarket. So you can try those. You know, they, 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 some of them are good. Some of them, you know, they don't always taste obviously as good. I would prefer personally from a health perspective to try and get all of my nutrients from more natural food sources. But again, I understand that this doesn't always suit everyone's needs anyway. So think about, you know, adding in rice, quinoa, lentils. You can buy packets of uh, pre-mixed blends that are in there for you as well. Add, you know, nuts and seeds into your um, porridge in the morning, into your granola, snack on them. You can have uh, flax seeds, chia seeds. You know, there's a great recipe for chia seed pudding, which I can bring to you shortly. Um, just comment below and let me know if you'd like to see that one. All of these nutrient-rich, good sources of plant-based protein, and by combining them together, you can be confident that you're gonna get that complete amino acid profile that's gonna help you meet your protein demands from your physical activity and your daily activity. 
So I really do help, hope that you found this video useful. Um, if you've got any more questions about how to eat, what to eat, or you'd like to see more of this type of education, um, then remember to comment below. Please do give me a like, and you know, if you wish to subscribe to see more future content, then do so as well. Thank you so much, and I will see you all again soon.